literature in south india the term in literature known as sangam literature was combined from presentations made by tamil scholars at three assemblies held at madurai under royal patronage this literature belongs to the period between 3rd century bce and 3rd century ce it includes poetry and works on grammar which gives us valuable information about the events of the time among tamil works produced after sangam age are the epics shilpa padikeram and mani megalai shilpa padikeram was composed by a poet named ilango adigal around 1800 years ago it is a story of a merchant named kovalan who lived in puhar and fell in love with a courtesan named madhavi neglecting his wife kannagi later he and kannagi migrated to madurai where he tried to raise money by selling his wife's jewelry to a goldsmith he was falsely accused of having stolen the queen's anklet the pandya king sentenced kovalan to death kannagi who still loved him was full of anger and grief at this injustice and destroyed the city of madurai mani megalai a buddhist epic was written by satnanar it was named after its heroine the daughter of kovalan and madhavi it describes how she makes social service the primary aim of her life another great work is tiruvalluvar's tirukural which is a collection of two line poems bearing morals architecture monuments are a great source of our knowledge about the past they not only tell us about the materials used but also about the technological skills of their builders ashoka's pillars during ashoka's reign numerous pillars were built they are monolithic having decorative tops called capitals bearing beautifully carved animal figures the most famous is the lion capital at sarnath which is now our national emblem the lion capital is printed on our currency and on government documents the iron pillar at mehroli delhi is a remarkable example of the skill of indian crafts person it was made about 1500 years ago we know the date because there is an inscription on the pillar mentioning a ruler chandra who probably belonged to gupta dynasty it is amazing that the pillar has not rusted in all these years stupa it is a type of buddhist monument usually a dome shaped structure with a central chamber a basket containing relics of the buddha or one of his disciples is kept inside the chamber early stupas were made of earthen molds later mud or baked bricks were also placed on the top to protect the stupa from rain or any other calamity a dome like covered structure was constructed only during the time of ashoka he is said to have built more than 80000 stupas throughout his empire and in afghanistan the sanchi stupa at vidisha in madhya pradesh is one of the best known stupas to be preserved to this day in later years four gateways called torana were added to it a circumambulation path or pradakshina path was also provided around this stupa the devotees go around the stupa on this pathway as a mark of respect to buddha a magnificent stupa at amravati in andhra pradesh was constructed during the later years it has carvings in stone dating to about 2000 years ago for many years an umbrella was mounted on top of the stupa as a sign of honor Some of the stupas have elaborately decorated sculptures and painted walls. The stupas, apart from remembering Buddha in many forms, provide a fine specimen of art and architecture of this period. Monasteries. Many rock-cut viharas, monasteries and chaityas were built under shatavahanas. The chaityas were rock-cut halls enclosing the stupas while the viharas were the dwelling places near the chaityas donated to wandering buddhist monks the buddhist caves in the western ghats are popular for the largest collection of chaityas the final form of rock cut architecture that developed from these early forms can be seen all over india in andhra pradesh kathiawar in gujarat and in ajanta and elora 
Ajanta and Ellora Caves. The complexes at Ajanta and Ellora are the best examples of cave architecture. There are 29 caves in Ajanta and 34 in Ellora. It is difficult to separate architecture from paintings and sculptures in the caves. In Ajanta, murals illustrate the stories of Buddha. Ellora has Buddhist, Hindu and Jain cave temples and monasteries. Temples in the Gupta period, image worship became very popular among the Hindus. Many temples were built for the worship of images. The temple usually had a small central room called Garbhagriha where the image of the deity was placed. The other features were carved pillars supporting a low roof and sometimes a tiered spire, Shikhara. The temples of the Gupta period became models for future North Indian temples. Narayanan Temple at Deogarh, Sanchi Temple, Bhitargao Temples and Cave Temple at Ajanta were built during this period. In South India, Pallava dynasty introduced the Dravida style of architecture in a number of pyramidical ruts, temples at Mahabalipuram. The Kailashna temple at Kanchipuram is a full temple complex with a tarred sanctuary and Mandapa hall preceding the sanctuary. Carved to represent Mount Kailasha, the home of God Shiva in the Himalayas, it is the largest monolithic structure in the world. To begin with, it was carved out of the rock but when it was finished, it was a freestanding temple. The shore temples taper from a broad base to a point thus making the tar called Vimana. Chalukyas built freestanding temples at Aihol, Badami and Pattadakkal. These temples are considered the beginning of rock-cut Hindu architecture. The Chalukyan architecture is a combination of South Indian or Dravid and North Indian or Nagara styles. The Chola dynasty of South India further developed temple building. It achieved its peak at Tanjavur, the capital of Cholas. Bronze sculptures of this era are the finest in South India. They depict Lord Shiva in many aspects. Sculptures The artisans of ancient period excelled in making sculptures. The stone workers of Mauryan period mastered the art of polishing stone. A rare sculpture in the statue of Chori Bearer, female attendant found at Didar Ganj near Patna. The Gandhara and Mathura school of art, which excelled in sculptures, flourished during Kushana period. The Gandhara school combined Greek art styles with Indian style. The Mathura school produced images purely in Indian style. Trivia the Hoyleshwara temple at Halibir stands on a platform like a casket. The temple is dedicated to Lord Shiva. It has two shrines connected by the pillared walls. Each of the shrine has the lingam of Hoyleshwara and Shantaleshwara. Kettumala, who was the chief of the staff of Vishnuvardhan, built the temple in 1121 CE.